The second time I went to Cuba was about 10 years after that, and I was invited. The first time I was just a tourist. Uh, the second time I went to Cuba, I, I was invited as a poet, and uh, there were three Canadian poets and three uh, poets from uh, Havana, and we read in, uh, in a place called Holguin, which is the second largest city in Cuba. And one of the Canadian poets had written a poem about the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I know some of the people in the audience aren't old enough to remember that, or, and for, for you it is history. I was a little boy um, in 1961 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And this poet read his poem, and Manuel is exactly my age. And uh, he's a professor in Holguin and a poet, a professor of English literature. And uh, so I said to Manuel, so what did the Cuban Missile Crisis mean to you? What do you remember? And he said he remembered being in the fields and when the American bombers came over. Now they did not, they did not drop any bombs, but they, they flew in close and their shadows went over the land and they knew it was a serious time, just as we did. And he remembers his mother, the farm mother, uh, rushing out into the fields and hurrying the children indoors. Um, uh, because of the kind of lingering threat. My uh, nephew recently said to me, at least in the Cold War we knew who our enemy was. And I thought, well, number one, in Cold War, it's not a hot war, it's a Cold War. Um, and I suppose in 1961, Manuel would have been thought of as the enemy. So. This is one of the reasons why I refuse to allow people to tell me who my enemies are. <laughs> Remembering the October missile crisis with Cuban friends, March 17, 2006. We were all merely children scorched in the burn shadow of thermonuclear war as we crouched in crawl shades at school like sundials in gardens of noon turned to salt in the suddenly lucid illusions of light. And this was our lot, to live among liars, while missiles bristled like coral in Cuba and madness built shelters at home, stocked cupboards with cans and stale crackers, and we watched the gray box in the parlor for comforting tinctures of truth. And why were we slaves of such fire? Ask the man with the hammering shoe. Ask the handsome Narcissus with his face an eventual coin, a profile in silver like all ancient Caesars of Rome. Ask Manuel, whose mother was frightened by droning bombers come low and buzzing fields near Holguin. I think now of dragonflies skimming their blue-green wet-winged reflections in the gravel ponds of home, for now we meet as friends, as gentle poets of our own peculiar pasts. I can see Grim Grumenko. I can see Fidel. I can see Khrushchev, Kennedy, McNamara, all those powerfully powerless men who left children quivering in our feckless bodies, our fathers blanched and helpless, our teachers rigid and stoic with instructions as Ontario autumns rattled orange and smoldered with deciduous doom. <laughs> 